Yep, we got it. Got some vision on that thing there, on that bad boy right there. So <laughs> yes. uh, first off, uh, I want to want to say thanks so much for uh, allowing me uh, a few minutes of your time tonight. And uh, it's an honor to be with you guys. Uh, you know, we're still in the process of trying to to make our football team better around here. I mean, we, we did have, uh, we've had a, a good run here for the last three seasons in particular, but, uh, you know, feeling like there's so much more that we can accomplish and do. Um, you know, when I, when Drew kind of contacted me about, about doing this, I was excited to do it because we haven't had a chance really to, to reach out uh, into Wisconsin at all, you know, from, you know, a little bit in, in the Illinois area recruiting wise, but we, we definitely want to, you know, take advantage of, of Wisconsin and, and the great football that's played up there and the great coaching that's going on up that, up that way. So just happy to be a part of it. And, uh, you know, we're, we're in the process of trying to, to build this program into, into something special. And, and by no means are we anywhere close to where we plan on going or plan on being uh, even in the near future. So we're in spring football now, uh, you know, trying to work on all those details that you guys are working on if you're in spring ball or, or working with your teams every day. Um, no magic sauce, just uh, a lot of hard work, a lot of elbow grease, and, and a lot of people that, uh, that uh, dig in and care, uh, players in particular, that, uh, that make all the difference for all of us and make it fun to go to work every day. So uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about, uh, sorry if my internet runs a little slow here. Uh, you know, when I, talked to, when I talked to Drew, he mentioned maybe uh, doing something about, you know, what, what's the thought process? What's, what do you go through as a, an offensive coordinator when it comes to kind of game planning against a defense that uh, likes to bring pressure? And, and we, we all know that uh, there's an element of that in everybody that we play against, but, but some of the heavier blitz teams, I, I think you got to kind of get your mind around some of the, some of the variables involved with playing a team that is a high pressure team. And, and we're, I don't know if we're fortunate or unfortunate, but our, our defense is kind of built that way. Uh, they're a big pressure defense. Uh, they force us to be on our toes offensively, have answers, have, have things in, in, in what we do scheme-wise to, to be able to handle, uh, whether it be edge pressure, whether it be, you know, uh, you know cross splits inside. We, we call that main around here uh, with the inside backers. Uh, whether that's zero blitzes or whatever that happens to be, whatever you happen to be facing. So uh, I put together, you know, a little bit of things that, that I, I kind of go through in, in my preparation, trying to get uh, the offense ready in particular and, and get my mind ready as the play caller. Uh, so just some thoughts to start with here. Uh, and then I've got some, some film clips of, of kind of, you know, how it, how it got put into practice when we, when we got to game time, if you will. So you know, preparing for pressure teams, I, I think, first of all, you know, identifying first off what what type of pressure team are they? I mean, are, are, is it a is it a five man pressure team? Is it a, a six man pressure team? Are they a zero blitz team that's that's going to bring everybody? And, and we kind of see in our league in particular an element of all those things uh, in who we play against, depending on opponents. So we'll, we'll see, you know, a lot of people would call a, a five man pressure, maybe more of a stunt. Uh, than a blitz, but, you know, pressure is pressure, whether it's zone pressure, whether it's man pressure. And that's, that really leads into the second thought. So what are they playing behind what they're bringing pressure wise? Uh, because it makes a difference in how you're going to kind of structure, I think more than anything, your outs for the quarterback, especially if you're into the RPO game and things like that, like we are around here, you know, are, are they a man coverage team behind their pressures? Uh, is that single safety? Are they a, you know, do they mix in some zone pressure with too deep? Do they, do they, you know, uh, you know, kind of use the corners uh, as uh, hard trap guys, uh, either to the field or to the boundary? You know, all those things can weigh into kind of teaching your quarterback that particular week exactly, you know, where his outs are. If we can't run the football, if we've got to kind of, you know, use that RPO stuff to kind of get the ball out of our hand. Where's he go? Where's his, where's his threats? Where's his outs? Uh, so from that standpoint, I think that's number two. I think, you know, thirdly, you got to look really hard at, you know, their tendencies blitz wise, because like anybody, we, we have a lot of tendencies ourselves offensively. I'm sure we, we dig through them all the time. We self scout the hell out of ourselves, but we still 
have certain things we like to do certain ways. And, and, you know, when I start watching teams at the beginning of the week in particular, I like to watch full games to start with from, from my perspective so that I can kind of get the rhythm of the defensive play caller, the defensive coordinator that we're going to be going against and try to get a better feel for how he calls the game. What, what, what his, you know, if, if we hit a big play is pressure coming the next play, you know, things like that, that, that his tendencies, not only uh, as a play caller, but what they do defensively, is it a down and distance thing? Uh, is it, you know, a higher probability in the red zone, which a lot of teams are obviously, you know, is the, you know, does that field position thing, if they got you backed up, are they, are they a little more aggressive? Are they a little more zone oriented? You know, all those different things. And then I think game situationally in particular, you know, I think we all know we have to be prepared for pressure when the game's on the line, uh, especially if, if uh, you know, they're desperate to get a stop or whatever, you know, but there's other game situations too that come up uh, that you've got to, you know, you've got to know is that their tendency to kind of bring pressure in those situations or whatever, whether it's a fourth down call uh, where you're behind trying to score a, a field goal or a touchdown to win the game or, or whatever the case may be. So, you know, those three areas in particular, what, what kind of pressure team are they? What are they playing behind it? And then, you know, by based on down and distance, based on field position, based on game situation, you know, what what's their tendencies? Where, where do they really like to heat you up uh, if they feel like they need to get a stop? I think moving beyond that, you know, you, you have to kind of approach it, I think, two-pronged, uh, from a two-pronged approach in particular. I think, you know, how does their pressure affect your run game? We're, we're a heavy inside zone team. Uh, that's kind of what we hang our hat on when the going gets tough. We have obviously a, a number of different auxiliary runs and stuff we do too. But the thing that our guys up front and, and the thing that our football team knows the best is the zone game. So we lean on that a lot. Uh, I, there's adjustments that need to be made to that from time to time, depending on what type of pressure we're going to see. I put some clips together here at the end. We'll talk about whether that's edge pressure, whether that's, uh, you know, inside blitz or whatever that happens to be. Uh, I think that kind of, for us in particular, uh, gives us at least a little bit of solitude in that, uh, you know, we can turn that into a, what we would call a Zulu or a full gap scheme if we need to. Uh, we can make some calls in, in, uh, with the edges of our offense in particular to help us. And, uh, you know, and then again, with the run game, how does that fit with your RPO game? Are you, are you somebody that's going to try to block everything against everything? Or are you going to have, you know, if you're playing the right kind of circumstances, are you going to give your quarterback an opportunity if he sees certain pressures to get the ball out of his hands to some free access throws and some things that the defense can give you? Uh, I think, you know, obviously, we all have to worry about versus pressure teams, how we're going to handle protection. And we're a big six man protection team uh, in our drop back game. For the most part, uh, we do run, you know, a number of things out of five man protection too, but uh, you know, how does our drop back protection hold up against what they do and what, what adjustments need to be made to that. And one of the things that we do that not everybody does uh, that makes it a little more difficult on them, but we ask our quarterback to learn how to protect himself. So he, he is in charge of the slide. He's in charge of ID. Now our center does ID the front. Uh, the quarterback basically either agrees with the ID or changes the ID, uh, which rarely happens, but it does happen. And the, and the quarterback is the guy who overrides it. And it's, and the reason for that really from my uh, philosophy and the way I've always kind of felt about it is if you're the guy back there with the with the ball in your hands and and you're facing a pressure team and you you got to know where your problems are um, so you, you know where you, whether you got to get the ball out of your hand you know whether you've got time to to wait on something uh, those things really run through the quarterback and uh, so in in being more of a gun team I think it gives him some unique perspective too to to kind of see some safety spins, some different things, and some, again, you go back to tells that the defense has. We're looking for those things all the time to try to help the quarterback with getting our protection turned the right way. How much do we need max protection? Do we need a seven-man protection against these guys? You know, if, if they're a big zero blitz team, that may be something that we get to. If, 
even if they are a zero blitz team, we feel like in a lot of situations, our six man can hold up, especially if they're a shell team that's going to bring it from depth. And uh, we, we feel like we're going to be able to get the ball out. But if we do need a seven man protection, you know, maybe our game plan's got to be built a little bit more around tight end attached things and things like that. So, uh, and then how does our play action in, in our pass pro hold up? So, you know, against pressure teams in particular, uh, we have the ability, at least quarterback wise, uh, to get us to a seven man slide in our uh, run action protection or our, you know, play action protections. Uh, if we feels like he needs it. So if he sees a tell or sees a pressure coming, uh, he has the ability uh, to get us to a seven man protection uh, so that we can, you know, attack what they're doing and, and protect ourselves a little bit better. And I've said this, said the tells word quite a bit already, but, you know, I, I think you've got to, you got to find and, and make sure you show your offense, uh, you know, with the scout team or with the look team or with the guys that you have kind of emulating the, the bunch that you're going to play against on defense, you've got to have those guys showing the quarterback in particular or your edge players in particular, if they're going to be making adjustment calls, uh, your center, if he's going to be making it, whoever you're going to design to do that around, uh, you've got to show them those things in practice. And then I think everybody around him also has to have a keen awareness that we're playing a pressure team. And, uh, you know, I coach the tight ends here as well as being the offensive coordinator. So, a lot of our line calls in the run game in particular, when the tight ends attached, I put on the tight ends and they make a lot of our line calls, especially on the edges. And I'll go through a little bit of that uh, when we get to the tape, uh, but they're in a unique perspective. We play them a lot of times in the toes alignment, a one by one off the offensive tackle. So they've got some vision, especially to their side of the formation about what's going to be going on. Uh, so they have, I think a unique perspective on that, but it takes some teaching obviously. And then we want to be able to use the, you know, use all the tools in our toolbox, uh, whether that's motion, whether that's cadence, you know, using cadence and, and getting a sneak peek at the defense, changing your cadence uh, is a way to tell where the pressure's coming from, obviously. And then, you know, trying to use motion in particular to identify if they're in a, in a zone coverage or a man coverage. Uh, especially in the drop back game, uh, just again, to feed as much information to the quarterback as we possibly can. And that's, that's really the key for us more than anything else. So uh, that's, that's just some thoughts that, that I put down as we start to kind of go through the process of game planning teams that, you know, are heavy pressure teams. And, you know, I want to say probably the highest pressure team that we played last year was, probably in the 40 percentile. So we, we, we do play against some guys that like to bring some pressure. So uh, I think these things in particular are the thoughts that I try to make sure that we're covering while we, we're together as an offensive staff and we're trying to put a plan together. So I, I got some, uh, some tape queued up here. So we're going to run through a little bit of this. And in, in, uh, so here we're playing, uh, we're playing against Memphis here. In, in Memphis was uh, one of the things that they love to do was bring field floods. So they love to bring uh, the Sam linebacker, if you will, or their nickel and the strong safety to the field and kind of play a little bit of a zero coverage behind it. And, and the idea for us when we saw this was to run check this and they kind of gave it away uh, a lot more maybe than some people do um, with where they had their you know, their outside linebacker in particular in their three down look and how soft they played him. And, whoop, sorry. Speaking of this guy here uh, on the bottom of the screen and how kind of soft he is in his stance. When he was rushing, he was kind of up in here. When they were bringing pressure, he was a little bit more in a toes alignment, which he is here. You can see the Sam linebacker, the nickel down here on the line of scrimmage. And then they're going to creep the strong safety in and bring him. So, our game plan thought here was to get to outside zone away from this, the, the pressure. And what we're going to try to do, and you can see this probably better from the end zone, is we're going to try to work these two guys, right, on this end and this outside linebacker who's going to end up standing right here. And then we're going to start to stake this defense back. So our offensive left guard is going to try to do what we call kind of chip through this nose 
and he should still have eyes on this front side linebacker, but you're going to see he doesn't really do that. We're going to slow this left guard down, all right, to help this tackle, and the tackle can even late ricochet off, even though we don't get that accomplished either. So I don't know how great a clip this is, but it, it we're trying to do the right things here. And as you watch, kind of watch this clip run, so you can see our quarterback walk up. He identifies the pressure. He moves the back over. We're going to stretch away here. And you can see our guard trying to dent the nose, although he loses sight of the linebacker, which we don't want him to do. And our backside guard being a little bit more, if you will, square and through this guy so we can kind of stop this movement that's coming off this edge, stop this movement that's coming off this edge, skate these guys and this guy being outside as a contained guy and trying to open up a seam where we can stretch and puncture the ball up in here. So this would be this would be one of the things, you know, going into the week. Hey, if we've got, uh, you know, an inside zone to the right here, we don't want to necessarily this week run into the pressure because they've got an extra overhang guy. We don't want to thin ourselves out that much, especially with a two linebacker look. We're going to have to get the stretch away. And this this is one of the ways that we would come back kind of field pressure here. Get to the next one here. All right, so here's one against uh, East Carolina where we see rotation. They're kind of bringing what, what we would term kind of inside strike here. So they're going to bring the Mike linebacker into this gap. They're going to bring the Sam linebacker or the nickel inside and then contain with the end, okay, and then roll to their one high coverage, okay? So – what we're doing here on the front side, and this is all controlled by the tight end, believe it or not, on the front side, when he sees this creep, he's making a call to this offensive tackle to tell him it's going to be you and me for the two inside guys, and we're going to let the looper free, and we're basically just going to turn our inside zone plate here into read zone. So we're going to read the wide end, and we're going to let, you know, let that guy kind of run up the field and then we're going to kind of Zulu, if you will, or full zone this inside. And our, you can see our, our tackle should keep coming here to the, to the deep defensive end. So as we look at this from the end zone, let me just slow it down and stop it here. What we're trying to do here, knowing that this guy's going to the A gap, the guard's going to capture him. These guys are still going to take care of the backside stuff, just like you guys, anybody would. These guys now, because it's inside pressure with him, okay, these guys are going to call a call between, so the tight end's going to tell the tackle, whatever. We use the term slap here. So the tackle's going to lock on whoever comes inside, and the tight end's going to zone through for the fold-in linebacker, and then we're going to read this end and if he's up the field like he is here, our plan would be just to hand the ball right underneath this guy. And our left tackle kind of screws it up. He kind of gets a little nosy on the tight end's business here. But I think what, what, what it illustrates more than anything is, you know, going back to, okay, what are your answers if you got inside zone called and they're running this pressure, you know, we turn it into really read zone. Uh, is the way we kind of go about it. So if this guy was coming down and coming off this edge, then we know that these guys are dumping inside. The tight end would make the same call. And the tackle would take this, the tight end would take this, and with this guy would be our read now. So, so either way, whether it's inside pressure or outside pressure, whoever that extra contained guy is outside, if the Sam stayed outside and the end dumped inside, the tight end would block him as it is. We just continue to zone up and the tight end ends up taking the Sam or the nickel and the tackle should stay on this down guy right here. So run game adjustments and, and really a lot of our stuff, excuse my, excuse my dog. He's a little touchy when the, when the doorbell rings, but uh, we'll use that even with some of the RPO stuff that we're doing uh, off of our inside zone stuff and the quarterback can either ignore the RPO and turn it into read zone, or he can do what we call bird it 
and he can put the back on the edge if he knows he wants to get the ball out of his hand and throw the RPO. If we know it's a it's a soft look outside where we can get, you know what I mean, a, a good gain uh, with getting the ball out of our hands. So we can do that either way. I think this next one's pretty similar. It's against the same team. Here's the same look now with the Sam, I believe, on edge pressure. So they're in their four down front. Here's our slap call going on again on the top of the screen between the tackle and the tight end. Tackle does a good job of slowing down a little bit and gathering the defensive end. And the tight end, if that guy was showing a little bit, would need to bump this guy's hip before he climbed to the backer. But you can see what it kind of does to this this kind of contain rush, this guy coming up the field. And if you get the movement that you're creating here with the slap call, you got a nice little alley to kind of press the heels and then get this thing out the back door. So here's a, here's a little look at it from the end line here. So they're obviously in a four down front here, even though there's a three technique inside, right? This, this is why I kind of put it on the tight end. It's kind of hard, I think, for these guys to make any adjustment when they're seeing edge pressure out here, knowing whether these guys are going to dump inside or not. And if you don't see it, you guys know as well as I do, these guys end up getting picked off and you end up with two guys outside, which is just a killer sometimes to, to inside zone in particular. So that's kind of where this comes from. Okay, so the tight end's in a unique perspective here. The tackle knows it's a four down front. He trusts the tight end to know that this is edge pressure. Otherwise, he should never call slap. And if these guys screw it up, then we'll get a new tight end who knows how to do it the right way. But you can see the guard kind of collect here. And you can see the backside linebacker who may be trying to fold back over top of this, just basically get caught in this wash and give us an opportunity to hit that ball out the back door. And again, if that, if that edge rusher, if, if, if he came down enough and he closed and tried to take the dive, then our quarterback's got the ball and he's out in space. So we're, we're truly reading that guy. Let's go to the next one here and see what we got cooked up. All right, this, this was a, a, a run check that we had versus uh, our friends from Tulsa when we played them. All right, they were, they were pretty good with their tells about when they walked this weak side linebacker up in the gap and the mic was positioned, stacked over the defensive end to the field that they were going to bring field strike. Okay, so they're going to bring basically, you know, Sam and Mike from the field, they're going to rotate you know, rock the defensive end to the boundary, okay? And having known that, this week we decided to kind of change what we were doing. So we actually moved the back over here and we wanted to block into this pressure instead of away from it. So we'll see how this kind of just, when we get to the end zone here a little bit, see how this kind of sorts out. So here's the mic. Stack more over this guy. That wasn't his normal alignment with the back on this side. He was in here a little bit more, so it's not a huge tell. But it, but coupling that with the Sam linebacker out here on the line of scrimmage, the mic in a stack position, right? We get to our run check, which is just we're going to run inside zone, and we're just turning it into mag. The other huge tell that they gave, they like to play this guy in a five, but if they were bringing pressure from the field, and please don't share this with Tulsa, I'd like them to continue to do it. They put this guy in an extra loose alignment over here for contain. Okay, so the quarterback, you know, during the week, obviously, we've got to give him enough of these so that we get to the check that we want, number one, uh, and number two, that everybody up front can kind of do their business. And, and uh, as we go through this, you can kind of see how this kind of plays itself out here. All right, so we're kind of, we're pushing ourselves all the way out here. This is actually becoming almost an ace, what we would call an ace between the right guard, right, for the mic with the center, letting the backside nose go. Now, he goes far enough 
that the backside guard can cut him off. And we're looking to hit the ball in this seam because the mic never read out of this. And we got our, our sorry, we got our tackle over here as our edge protector. And then our tackle kind of climbing on the backside linebacker and this guy too loose to really do him any good. So this is like a, we'd call this a push call front side, which would tell these guys to, to zone a full guy over. And then just reading the backside end over here, 94. So that's just, that's, that's some, some run game things. I think that's, I think I got some past things on here. Oh, here's one more run game thing. So here, talking about the RPO stuff. So, uh, you know, out of this 12 look in particular, we get a lot of single high stuff. You know, we're, we're decent at running the football. So people like to get this other safety involved in what they're doing. So this is, this is an instance where the quarterback in particular, we could have run inside zone here. He could have stuck with it. He, he, he has every right to do that, but we've got an RPO tagged on it. And knowing that they were a pressure team and they were going to give us free access outside, we had an RPO tagged on it. And if he thought this guy was too nosy into the box, instead of trying to run it into a blitz look, that he could get, you know, just get the free access and get the ball out of his hand. So I think if he handed it here, we're fine because this guy's trying to play a little bit of a cat and mouse game. There's a lot of, a lot of green grass in here for us to run the football. Uh, but obviously he felt like this guy was so far off. They're trying to use this guy in particular, who's was in the slot here to kind of do both jobs. I think if he sees the ball handed, he's going to fill it. If he thinks it's going to be a pass and he's kind of hanging in a, in a kind of a quick window and we'll either run glances off this We'll run speed routes off of this and, and a whole bunch of different I, you know, things to give them different looks so they really don't know if they want to do this with the safety, where to position this guy. So this happens to be a, a four-step rollover speed route outside. And I'll show you the, the inside zone stuff so you can see it. Uh, we prefer in our inside zone stuff versus three down to kind of push everything over to create movement. So we're going to push all of this, all of this business that we got here. We're going to push this over with the guard to the backside linebacker. All right. We're going to push out to the, to the Jack or the buck or whatever you guys happen to call that. And we're going to fax this guy back for the Sam who's on the line of scrimmage. So we got plenty of hats minus the drop down safety would have been no issue whatsoever if he would have decided to hand this ball off but he saw the free access in a really soft corner outside. So uh, giving him the ability to, to, to do both. One more look at it here. And you can see this guy kind of hovering in, in the throwing lane there, at least initially for uh, looking for a glance. Cause I think the week before we threw three or four of those. So here's, here's one more thing that we've kind of gotten into doing too against pressure teams and especially inside pressure teams. Okay. And this is, this is going to be, end up being almost like a zero blitz. Uh, I, I might be one high blitz, but they're going to bring basically the weak safety in the will. Okay. And, and we got it, we've gotten into doing a little bit of what we would call, or, or probably what anybody would call kind of triple option off inside zone. And, and basically we're going to block one and block two with these two outside guys. And we're going to, this is called skip for us. So we're going to skip the tight end out. We're going to read the defensive end. Okay. And so it's read zone. If he's, if it's a pull read, then he's going to get out and either run it or dump it to the tight end, depending on how they defend it. Okay. So it's a little bit of like triple option inside zone, if you will, here versus a blitz team. Anytime they run internal blitz, okay? Our defense does a lot of this stuff too, or they'll bring cross dog with these backers or whatever. Anytime that this guy sees, our quarterback sees that, he's going to do what we call on this play in particular, drift and dump, okay? So he's going to drift away from, he's not going to read it anymore. He's just going to keep the ball drift out. And then you'd be amazed how many times this tight end just kind of leaks out of here free. 
Because right here, the way they're trying to play this, all right, this Mike Backer actually has the back man-to-man -man and the defensive end has the tight end. So I'm not saying that's great defense. I'm just saying that this is another way that we use pressure against people, uh, especially with our zone game. So this is, the, this is the little drift and dump kind of triple option deal we do. If it's blitz, then it's we know that we're going to throw the ball out and get it to the tight end. If he's covered, the quarterback either runs it or burns it at his feet. All right, so just a little look at it there. All right, next on here, I think I've got a, okay, so Memphis had decided that, that they were going to check when we checked and do some different things against us. So we kind of got into a you look, we look. So here, here's kind of one of our dummy cadences that we use. All right, I know everybody does it. You know, everybody uses cadence. And I think, as I said in some of my opening remarks, using cadence in particular against blitz teams to give you some tells about what they're trying to do and to give your quarterback some more information, I think is a really good thing. So here we're going to get to a little bit of a zone beater. We got a little bit more of a man beater going on up here on the top of the screen with just quick routes, but we've got kind of a, a hook concept going on down here on the bottom of the screen as kind of a zone beater, if you will. And the quarterback, even though it's man, decides because this guy pedals on the snap that he's going to read the hook, okay? And they're, they're trying to bring this guy who's going to read out into the blitz if the back re releases on a free release. So we felt pretty good about what we were doing. What we don't do a very good job of here is our right guard tracking the backer to his side that was ID'd here. So let's just take a look at that. All right, so I'm, I'm quite sure our quarterback probably made a, a, some sort of fan call to the, to, the, uh, to the guards here because of the look that they're given, and we would make this guy kind of the hot guy. What he should have did was keep the slide on so that we could have eaten this up knowing that this guy or someone's got to cover the back to protect himself just a little bit better here. And we're trying to squeeze it back. You can see on this side, the left tackle kind of sees it as this guy drops out. We're trying to squeeze this back inside. We're just late at doing it. But it's a good quick throw and an opportunity, again, based off of what we saw them doing for the quarterback to try to get us into the right protection so that at least he knows on the quick game that we're running here, he's got a chance to catch and throw and get the ball out even if we don't do a great job of blocking everybody, like you can see, we didn't, obviously. All right, so here, here again, you know, we talked about in the beginning again, right, using motion a little bit. So we're going to motion this guy across, not for any great shakes other than to try to get a coverage tell on exactly what we think they're going to do here. This is obviously a little bit more of an overload front if you look down here on the bottom of the screen. So the quarterback's gonna direct the protection to the overload, obviously. This guy runs across, he knows immediately that it's man coverage. This linebacker who's folding inside here has the back. So if at all possible, we wanna try to get the back out. Here he definitely helps on the twister. But the guy that's hard to account for, obviously, is the quarterback. So I can't say that we got people running wide open all over the field. But what the quarterback did was basically ID that it was man coverage, saw the overload, got our slide going that way so that we were covered protection-wise. Now we just got to make sure we got eyes on this dude. And it gives – Obviously makes a great run here. Nice to have quarterbacks who can get themselves out of jail. Do a good job of picking our guard off here. He needs to be a little more square and get his butt bumping back over here. 
but great job by the back, kind of cleaning it up. See what else we got on here. All right, again, motion to determine man or zone. So our quarterback here is using his toolbox here. So he sees zero pressure, and you don't see it on the tape. But what we ask our receivers to do when they see these four defensive guys lined up at near the same level, which a lot of cover zero teams will do to you, we ask our, our, our guys to point those guys out. So they should be, if they are got any awareness working in their brain at all, they should. everybody on the offense, on the skill positions, should be pointing at these DBs just to help this guy, just a little bit. Now, he happens to see that it's cover zero, but what if he didn't? He, we put a lot on this guy. So any little bit we can help him with zero coverage in particular, we ought to be doing that. But we're going to get a zero blitz here. He knows the route that we've got. We've got an option route going on to the tight end here. He's going to tap the route out to the wide receiver here because of the zero pressure that he sees. This is a third down call, kind of a, a high red zone call, which they were very, you know, a very heavy blitz team. So we're just, he's keeping our six man protection on. He could have attached the tight end and gotten to a seven man protection here, but he's just decided that, hey, I'm gonna tap a quick route out here. I think it's like third and six here, third and five. I'm gonna tap a quick route out here and I'm gonna get the ball out of my hand. And then, good Lord willing, we're going to catch it. And, and this, is, this is how this all fits together. So if, if your boss is like my boss, so it's third down, I'm usually getting some sort of indication as the OC whether we're in four down territory or not. And I usually get that on second down. So one of the reasons that this all fits together and we're not running a deeper route, I wish we'd have had something breaking inside, obviously, versus zero coverage. But one of the reasons we're not running a deeper route is because we're kind of in four down territory here as well. So that's kind of how some of this fits together as well. So obviously it's a one-on-one -on -one tackle too, but you can see how he's easy, easy in giving these guys a tap making sure everybody understands their responsibilities here. We know we can't block them all. He knows we can't block them all. So he's got to make sure the route is such that he can get the ball out and give us at least a chance to catch it clean, break a tackle, make a first down, or with the knowledge in his head, knowing that we've got another down if we need it. So how was that? We good? Yeah, great stuff, Coach. Any 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 questions anybody's got? I'd love to love to answer anything you got. Uh, again, just thankful to be a part of uh, what you guys got going on. Absolutely. So uh, one one question I had. So I actually saw, I got to see a clinic done by Dan Lanning, the DC at Georgia, and actually he had some stuff in there about some of the pressures that they were trying to run against your pass pro. Yeah, specifically um, how yeah. they were trying to bring four four to the side of your running back. Yeah, um, what do you what do you have any adjustments you guys make to that kind of thing? Yeah, I, I can't say that we did the best job in America of a, <laughs> of blocking Georgia in particular, uh, whether they were blitzing us or not. Uh, but uh, what we do if we can if we can diagnose that teams are a team that likes to blitz the back. Um, we like to hop and move the back around or start an empty and bring him into the backfield and not give them the full length of the time. You know what I mean? The time to kind of get their blitzes called and, 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 and get kind of scheme us that way. So that's, that's one way that we handle it. Um, we also uh, have to, we have to do a better job of this, but, but our guard, when, when they were trying to, they, they kind of put the, 
if I remember correctly from the game, and it's been a while since I watched it again, but they put the Mike linebacker kind of in a position where he was kind of in a zero and we didn't do a great job of tracking him. So they, they were, they were doing a pretty good job of disguising it. And our guard needed to track their, their, their Mike linebacker a little bit better. And we would have been able to pick up a lot of that four man pressure a little bit better. So, but that's yeah. uh yeah, I mean, teams will definitely try to scheme and, and we, listen, we, We've got, you know, and there's times where even in the game plan, you know, I'll put the back opposite of where the man side is. He's not always on the man side just to try to break that tendency so teams don't do that to us. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. And then what about the one thing we're starting to see more of, at least for us, is guys that are going to mug up their linebackers in the A-gaps. So you're getting like five across the front. What are you doing against that? You check into – Is it like four four down double A-gap? Yep, it can be, or we see odd, and they'll walk both guys up over our guards. Okay, so if, if it was odd and they walk both guys up over the guards, we would we would give a call to the line, okay, to be basically we 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 we'd be we'd be double reading the guards on the linebackers to overhang, and the back would be involved in our six man protection with that as well. If that makes sense, so yep, we like if. If we're in five man protection and we're gonna we're gonna sit and sort, you know, we make a Florida call. And if it's a six man protection, we're kind of doing the same thing with the back being the extra fit player, depending if the guard gets eaten up and he's got to add in to where the guard would be in the slide. We call that a gator call. So it, it you know what I mean? It kind of works yep. almost exactly the same way. Makes sense. Yep. Yeah, we're just starting to see some more of that sim pressure stuff where guys they'll walk up right over our either our guards or our center, and then they're dropping yeah. a guy off and doing all that stuff. So that's a pain in the ass. And, <laughs> and sometimes the sometimes the uh, you know the safety spin, if you can see it, sometimes there's tells in the secondary that tell you which is coming and which isn't. Also, the other thing that we do against some of the the four down double A stuff, we'll walk our running back up closer to the line of scrimmage. So he'll be, you know, if we don't want to full slide it, we'll just put the, put the running back closer to his work. So he'll be like heels at three. So he can take that linebacker on in the a gap. If he does come, if not, he can check out from there. If it's more of a team where we feel like we could full slide it and the back can handle, you know, a, a linebacker on the edge of their defensive look, then we would full slide it. So we'll do a little bit of both. The, the only problem with full slide is you end up getting your back. If it is a bluff, you end up getting your back trap. Your back is trapped uh, in protection uh, and it's late, late to get out or never gets out. And we like to like to throw that guy the ball a little bit. No, it makes sense. Good stuff, coach. Well, Hey, I super appreciate you coming on. That was really good. Exactly what I was hoping it would be. So I'm very thankful for that. And, uh, Good luck with spring ball and hopefully we'll we'll talk again soon. We appreciate you. Anytime. Absolutely.